miles of a major highway in San Juan, Puerto Rico, shut down today as hundreds of thousands of protesters are marching, demanding Governor Ricardo Rosseo resign after a leak exposed messages he sent and between him and several of his closest aides where he makes profanity-laced, misogynistic and homophobic comments. But the governor remains defiant, announcing yesterday he will not be stepping down, but saying that he will not seek re-election in 2020. The protesters today say that is not enough. Puerto Rico is still hurting from Hurricane Maria, the devastating natural disaster that took the lives of nearly 3,000 Americans. At the time, President Trump failed to help the island in its hour of need, ignoring and then criticizing them for needing assistance. But the president gives himself a glowing review today. I'm the best thing that ever happened to Puerto Rico. I've had many Puerto Rican friends. I have a real understanding of Puerto Rico. I've, I've had jobs in Puerto Rico. Uh, I had, I think, the most successful I own the Miss Universe contest, the pageants. And we had them in Puerto Rico uh, twice. And I'll tell you, we had tremendous successes. I've had a great relationship with Puerto Rico. I'm the best thing that ever happened to Puerto Rico. Uh, joining our conversation, <laughs> actress and activist, my friend, Rosie Perez. Oh. But, thank you for being here. I'm oh, sorry thank you for having me. to set it up that way. That was hilarious. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to all that. Let's go to our friend, Melissa Mark Viverito, former New York City Council Speaker, calling in from San Juan with a report there. Uh, just take us through what, what today has been like and, and, and what's happening this hour. Melissa? Do we have Melissa? Yes, I'm here. Take us through what's happening right now. We've seen the pictures all day of protesters despite the rain. Take us through what the day has been like there. No, I mean, it's been amazing and exhilarating, right, that you have hundreds of thousands of people. Um, this is historic, probably the largest gathering in the history of the island. People, regardless of party affiliation, regardless of agenda, that are coming together with one united call. Um, and so this was important for me personally uh, to be here. Uh, I feel that it is about turning the page. It's about people reclaiming their government, saying that the way things have been done uh, are not acceptable. We, as a people, uh, need to be governed by a responsible government uh, and and pushing back against the corruption and obviously all the misogyny and sexism and homophobia that was expressed in those chats um, is reflective of the moral character of the governor and those that were formed part of it. So this is a real incredible uniting moment, unifying moment for Puerto Rico and it really is a, a new day on the island. Melissa, just for our viewers that may not, I mean, this has been all over, I think this is on the front page of USA Today and all over the papers, but just, just take us through sort of the anatomy of this scandal. So there were private text messages between the governor and some of his staffers that reveal what you just described, messages that are deeply racist and misogynist in nature. Just, just take us through um, the sort of the bombshell that exploded when those messages came out. Well, I mean, look, and, I, and I, as I say this, I want people to also think, when I say Rosé Joe, to also put Trump in, because I think it's a very similar dynamic with what we're pushing back against the Trump administration. What the chats revealed, in essence, uh, basically uh, was extensive network of corruption, utilizing government resources to enrich your friends, um, to give uh, preference to your friends, using government resources to go against your opponents, uh, to go against the press. There's a lot of conversations in there about stories that the administration did not like and trying to figure out how they could go after the reporters and undermine the reporters, how to go after a Department of Justice um, a federal monitor that was looking into pr providing uh, police reforms in the Puerto Rican Police Department, which was found to be uh, going against constitutional rights of, of people that were protesting, et cetera. Um, and so there, there, is, there was a lot of that that just exposed. People knew this kind of stuff. It was brewing. It's not just against the Rosselló administration. This goes back to other administrations as well. But people just, I think it was just uh, the, you know, the, that drop that just um, was, was took it over the, the edge for people when they saw it all exposed and all right there in front of their eyes. And now it's about this um, in rejection. And so the fact that the governor cannot understand and seem to understand the ineffectiveness, uh, he cannot be a leader at this point. There's no way that he could put forward an agenda 
and be successful. And, and people are out there in the hundreds of thousands telling him that he's refusing to leave office. And so the only other alternative right now, if he refuses to leave, is for impeachment proceedings to begin in the legislature. And both houses are dominated and controlled by the party of the governor. Um, so if he does not resign, the people will obviously be putting pressure on the legislature to you know, start impeachment proceedings. And uh, there's been some hesitation. There's, there's, there's a commission that's been convened. It's being looked at. Um, but people, that's not acceptable. And people want the governor to do what is right by the people. Rosie, I think Melissa is exactly right to bring this to Trump. And, and I describe sort of working in the news this way to someone. There's so much news, but not very many different stories. And what you can't unbraid or separate is corruption, misogyny, intolerance from this public official, the tinderbox that is his constituents, and everything we've been talking about for the last week with Donald Trump and the crisis he created. Yes, the parallels are very, very scary. Um, but one thing that I really want to say is that what um, the former council speaker did not address is the sexist comments. You know, he called a former elected official of the United States a whore. Let's just put it out there. He said that if someone put a bullet hole in Carmen Yuling's head, they would be doing him a favor. But the tipping point, that was a tipping point for women because women have been protesting in front of the governor's um, uh, residence since 2018. A lot of funds were cut after Maria. The surge in domestic violence against women and children was astronomical. Um, of course, the Puerto Rican uh, government disputed those numbers because they didn't have any numbers. Um, and, and I also want to state that the people, the narrative that's going out there that Puerto Rico is such a mess, Puerto Rico is a mess, but the people of Puerto Rico are not a mess. The people of Puerto Rico are not corrupt. The government of Puerto Rico is corrupt. The government of Puerto Rico is a mess. And to put that on the entire island of people really makes me so angry. And, and, to, and to target someone who's responsible for drawing attention to all the suffering at the island, like it's unclear to me without Mayor um, uh, Carmen Yulin Cruz holding that binder of what FEMA was asking her to do as the mayor, uh, whether aid would have been rushed in at all. And the fact that she took all of Trump's arrows probably explains why she became a target. Absolutely. And also, another point is that this is not about political parties. It really is not. The reason why I believe that he stepped down as president of his party is because they are nervous because that party wants statehood. And if you destroy that party, if he brings down that party, that fight comes into question, right? But the people of Puerto Rico are not caring about that issue right now. They want things fixed. They want justice. This is not even a socialist issue that's, I know that's the hot push button attack, attack right now. It is not. And the people who are Republicans on the, on the island, who are independent, who are Democrat, the tipping point was, uh, uh, was not just the misogynistic and the corruption and this and that. It was the fact that he joked about the dead. He joked about feeding the dead to animals, to birds, to crows or whatever. That was, in my opinion, the people that I've spoke to on the island, they were said, basta ya, enough. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.